protect yourself and your family from unexpected challenges. Consider accident only income protection. Click the link in the description to find out more. Boxing King Media in association with SaveMoreMoney.com with me, uh, Matthew Matthew Matt. Great to see you here, Bournemouth again. Um, obviously not as uh, as hot as we as it is when it, when we were here last time. But uh, yeah, how are you keeping? Yeah, not too bad. Can't complain. Uh, looking forward to the fights on uh, on, on I'm going to say Saturday on, on Sunday. Um, you know, every every time I've been to Bournemouth now, this is the fourth one I think, or fourth, fifth, and it, every every time it's been a really good, really good night. So uh, I expect I expect sun, tomorrow night, Sunday, to be just as good as that, if not better, because I think uh, I think it's a good card. But I think the main event in particular, I can't see how it can be anything other than a really good fight. I mean, we'll come to Masnak in a moment, but we 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 were all assuming that this will be. A Coley again. Yeah. A Coley had it in the contract where he had the right to uh, have a rematch. Are you surprised that he hasn't taken that up? Yeah, 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 yeah. Don't know what the thought process behind all that was or is. Um, uh, I thought he would have, yeah, to be honest. Um, haven't really heard a lot on it either, so I don't know what to read into that. I mean, he did an interview earlier this week um, and he spoke about that he might move up to heavyweight. Um, He's got some stuff happening in his personal life, a few changes, etc. And he might revisit Chris Billum Smith. But when you're a champion and you lose the belt and you've got an opportunity to fight for the belt again, as an ex-fighter, what do you do? Well, look, you, you, you'd like to... When you've got the rematch clause, you've, you've got a legal uh, right, haven't you, to exercise it. So you've, you've got a control. You can control that you, you're going to get that opportunity again. If you don't exercise it, well, then you're playing, you, you, I suppose you, you, you're relying on faith then that, you know, it'll, it's going to work out eventually or I'm going to get my shot as long as I keep winning. Uh, obviously, no guarantee. But as long as you've got that immediate rematch clause in that period of time, you have got that uh, legal right to, to exercise that uh, clause and then you're going to get your shot, you're guaranteed it. If you, if you waive that, well, then, you know, you're, playing, you're leaving it to chance a little bit. But, you know, also... If you're not right or you're not ready, then maybe that is the right thing to do. Like, you know, as much as there's no point exercising it just because you've got that right. If you're not right, you know what I mean? And I don't know if he's got stuff going on outside the ring or in his personal life or if he's, as you mentioned, or, or, or if it's a case of he's thinking about moving up to heavyweight, then maybe that right now isn't the right time for him. Do you know what I mean? And he, and he just thinks, well, OK, I understand and accept that by waiving my rights to this rematch clause that there's no guarantee that I'm going to ever get that again but I guess if you, you sometimes you just got to back yourself and trust the process and think well you know right now just isn't the right time for me and I've got to get myself right first and once I'm right then, I, then I'm ready to make moves I think he's lost in the last five or six years or he's only lost one in the last five or six years he, he, uh, he, he lost a clo he lost a good fight to Tony Bellew he lost uh, to Dorticus as well I know that um, I think he's only been stopped once earlier on, um, but you know it's, it's quite remarkable that he hasn't fought for a world title because he's been in and around that sort of top ten bracket for a long time now. Um, and like I say, he lost the daughter Custom Valley, who both went on to then win world titles. Um, he probably thought this chance just had passed him by and he wasn't going to get a world title shot. But here he's at 36, I think is he. 37, 36, getting a, a shot for the first time. So I'd imagine he knows he's not going to get, probably not going to get another go after this. So he's, I think he's going to try and take it with both hands. Ben Whitaker, what have you made of his career so far? I think five fights in a, since he's been a professional. Yeah. Um, just your analysis of what you see and you know how good can he be? Uh, I think his ability is, is undoubted. I think the talent is there. Um, you know, but bit, having talent and being a successful amateur, even if you've got a pro style and all the rest of it, you've still got to make that transition. You know, and you, you only do that by fights, you know, uh, performances. Um, 
obviously he's been hampered through injury. Um, you know, it's, it's it's not like I'm not. I don't think it's time to panic, but I do think he needs to get a move on. You know what I mean? And uh, you know, touch wood, he doesn't pick up any in injuries because he has been a little bit, you know, plagued by those, hasn't he? So he's not a spring chicken. He does need to crack on. Um, but I do think he's got that sort of level of ability and talent that he can probably, as long as he, he can get the right fights, I think he can move quickly. Well, we look forward to a, a great show and, f and fights on, on Sunday, tomorrow night. Uh, Matt, Matt, just some other topics flirting around in boxing, as always. I'd like to get your opinion on. Obviously, big, massive card coming up December 23rd. Wilder Parker, Joshua Wallin, Dubois Miller. Just your thoughts on, kind of, I haven't spoken to you since it's been announced, but just your thoughts on the card itself and, and taking place in Saudi Arabia. Yeah, listen, it's, it's, a, it's a good card, isn't it? A, a lot of big names on the one card. It, it's a shame some of them aren't against each other, um, but they are in good fights. You know, AJ Wallen's a good fight. Um, uh, Wilder Parker is a good fight. It'd be nice if we got Wilder and AJ. You know what I mean? And, but look, it is what it is. It, it's still a really good card. Um, and, uh, you know, Bivol's on it as well. So, yeah, there's a lot, a lot of big names on the card. It's a good card. We had real, real you know, solid. Um, and then, obviously, we've got Fury Usyk in the February. So, hopefully, then, things will open up even more. Just your thoughts on Joshua and, and Ben Davison link up. Um, I spoke to Shane McGregor yesterday, and Shane said to me that, you know, he went, he went Joshua went from Rob McCracken to... He, he bought in Joby, Angel Fernandez, bought, then went to Robert Garcia, then moved to Dallas for a couple of camps, and it takes a couple of camps to, to gel with the trainer. Now he's back in the UK with Ben Davidson. Eddie Hearn has said that one of the reasons is because there's not enough time for him to travel to Dallas, train, travel back, go to Saudi, etc. And, and plus, Derek was training Ryan Garcia. But just your just your thoughts, because it's it is a a, a a big dangerous fight for for Joshua with Wallen. Yeah, I think I think with trainers, it's um, it's not always the ability of the trainer uh, where it can be availability and logistics you know if you can't be in two places at the one time no one can and if he's tr he's got his set up in his camp really in america and he's training a lot of big name american fighters i know aj is a huge name and heavyweight etc but you know he's he's got a lot of fighters there and then to move I can see how that probably just, in theory, it's probably made up and they've had a good conversation and maybe it worked for that fight that they had lined up. But moving forward to sustain it, it's not going to be easy just from, you know, practicality of things. And uh, like I say, it's all right in theory, but in practice, it, it, it can be difficult. Tony Nelson said to me just a few moments ago that he feels that anti Joshua is cutting corners. He feels that... Ben Davis shouldn't be training anti Joshua. He said that Ben Davis, and I'm paraphrasing here, hasn't done enough to prove that he can train someone at the caliber of anti Joshua. Um, look, he trained Tyson Fury, didn't he, with a comeback fight with Wilder, having been out for a few years, and he hadn't really trained anyone at that point, Ben Davison. Um, look, it's who you click with, really. It's who you click with, um, and who, who can get the best out of you. At where you are now in your career, um, what can Ben Davison do in a fight? Don't know. We'll, we'll see. You know, it's. Um, but you know, I think I think AJ's got to be got to be on his game. You know, while in nothing to lose, everything to gain. You know, he showed against Fury. He can be a tough, difficult opponent. So, yeah, he's got to, He can't look past him. You mentioned there, Fury Usyk. Um, John Fury says that. He feels Tyson needs a bit more time to, to work on his conditioning. He feels Tyson Fury is getting hit too much now. <clears throat> I spoke to Clifton Mitchell yesterday, who, who was part of Tyson's training team with Peter Fury, and Clifton said to me that back in the days, Fury was more um, loose on his feet, more tiptoe, moving around. But with Sugar, he's more flat-footed. So when you're going to be flat-footed, you're going to be more in range and more open to shots. Is that accurate? Probably, because he... Um, he you know, when he when he boxed Wilder the first time, he was very mobile, uh, but I think he was considerably lighter than what he is now. He obviously sort of bulked up a bit, and in the second fight with Wilder, you know, he stood his ground and even pushed him, backed him up, didn't he, and, and got stoppages. So um, they've elected for strength and, and weight, which is naturally going to affect your mobility. So 
Um, it's, it's, it's pros and cons, isn't it? You want to, if you want to improve this area, well, it might disimprove this area. It might affect that area negatively. So you can't have it every way. Eddie Hearn said his legs are gone. Punch resistance has gone. He's on the decline. Is that just Eddie Hearn just preparing this this big pitch that Joshua Fury happens sometime next year, or are any of those sentiments accurate? I, I think they're all on the decline. I think all the heavyweights, those top heavyweights, they've been around a while now. All of them, they've all been in some tough hard fights. They've all earned a lot of money, which will impact how hungry you are. They've all had different trainers. You know what I mean? It's all. I think. I think. I think they're probably. I think. I don't think any of them are shot. But I think they've probably all seen better days. Interesting, interesting. Well, we look forward to a, a great show here on Sunday, then Saudi, uh, and then the New Year. And by the way, so just the fact that they've seen better days means we might get better fights. You know, the, the thriller in Manila was probably the best fight in terms of drama and action, everything out of Muhammad Ali Frazier. And they would both definitely pass their best in that fight. So, you know, from a fan's point of view, it doesn't mean we're not going to get great fights, you know, but I just think, oh, I think if you look at all the... The, the top heavyweights currently and you look at the careers they've had and the age they are and everything I, I would say they're probably all they're, 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 I'd say they're all slightly on the decline now OK Matt appreciate your time as always yeah it is Saturday it's not fight night today it's fight night tomorrow and I'm sure we'll catch up with you uh, after the show cheers nice one thanks Matt what, what's your one now box have you ever been stranded on the side of a motorway with a broken down car like me is that something that worries you? That's where Motor Breakdown Insurance comes in. If your vehicle breaks down, a trained professional will be sent out to get you back on the road. Or if this is not possible within the specified time frame to transport you to your home or to the nearest garage.